Okay, now we're going to do some examples of some uh, subtraction videos. And if you watched the last video and saw how I, I kept typing in the wrong thing on the last problem, you'll see looking back at this that I went back and fixed it because that was number five and that was just really bothering me. So just, you know, just to let you know that I, uh, I too make mistakes um, and am not careful enough sometimes. And we, uh, we all can learn from that. So let's go on to number seven. Um, and we're going to look at a variety of, I think, four, maybe four different um, or three different kinds of subtraction problems. I can't remember. I think it's three. All right. So we're going to start with these. All right. Well, so we got negative six minus four. So negative six minus four. Now, remember, um, at some point, you won't have to rewrite these. But I think for now, rewrite it as an addition problem. So it's plus negative four. Okay, and then apply the rules we know that we actually used quite extensively in the last video. So negative six plus negative four, add your numbers together because they're both the same sign. So you get 10 and then keep your common sign, which is negative. All right, one minus three, you're gonna write as one plus negative three. And so you're going to do your subtraction because your signs are different. So you have a positive here, sorry, you have a positive here and you have a negative here. So we're going to go three minus one, and that gives me two. And then you're gonna take the sign of the larger number, and the larger number is three, and its sign is negative. So the answer is negative two. So for these, you would get negative 10 and negative two, and away we go. All right. Let's look at another one like that. Okay, so five minus eight, we're gonna rewrite it as five plus minus eight. And then signs are different, so you do a subtraction problem, subtract the smallest one from the biggest one. And remember, when I say small and big, I'm talking about ignoring their signs, just looking at you know the absolute value of it. So eight minus five gives me three. This is the larger number, the number with the larger absolute value. So we're gonna take its sign, so it would be negative three. So negative three is my answer for this one. We'll put that in here. All right, next. Now, next one you have negative three and then I'm gonna rewrite it as plus negative four. I'm doing this, this lower problem here. Um, they're the same sign, so you just add them up and then you keep the common sign, the common sign is negative. So you get negative seven. All right, let's put that in, negative seven, and then let's check. And I think we're good on these. All right, so let's move on to our next type of problem here. Okay, and I apologize if you can hear the sound of uh, my family in the background. All right, double negatives. So I'm gonna write this out, and I'm gonna drop the parentheses. So negative four minus a minus three, well, you got a double negative right there, so let's rewrite that as negative four plus three. Um, and remember, if you do that like dash thing where you go through it, just just remember that you have to dash both of them. Okay, you can't just dash one because it's it's that's not how it works. So negative four plus three, um, different signs now. So you would do a subtraction problem. So you do four minus three which gives you one, and then you take the sign of the one that's bigger, and the one that's bigger is four, and its sign is negative. So you'd get negative one. And then this next problem, we have four minus a minus eight. I dropped the parentheses, okay? This becomes four plus eight, because it's a double negative. And uh, four plus eight is 12. Signs are the same, and uh, you add it up and you keep the common sign, which is positive. All right. Let's look at one more set of problems like this and then we'll go on to the next ones. Okay, so two minus a minus six. Again, I'm dropping the parentheses. You don't, you don't need to see those because we know we're gonna get rid of them. Um, this becomes a positive, two plus six. And then two plus six is eight. All right, the lower one, you have negative two minus a negative three. Let's rewrite that. 
with the parentheses gone. And then let's rewrite that getting rid of the double negative. So negative 2 plus 3. Signs are different. So we go 3 minus 2. You subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. 3 minus 2 is 1. And then you take the sign of the one that was bigger. Well, 3 is bigger and its sign is positive. So your answer is positive 1. So my answers for this are 8 and 1. And we're making good progress here. So let's look at this last batch of problems, if it will let me look at them. Oh, i got to hit that button thing. All right, so uh, let's see, 10, 11, 12, so 13. All right, I'll move this back. Let's give myself some room. All right, so mixed, mixed now. So we got 3 minus minus 2, so that becomes 3 minus minus 2. Get rid of the parentheses. Double negative. 3 plus 2, 5. Okay, and then that lower one, rewrite as an addition problem. Negative 29 plus negative 22. And then you can see that you have two negative numbers that you're adding together. So just add them up as if they were positive. So 29 and 22 gives me 51. And then take the common sign. The common sign's negative. So negative 51. So my answers are 5 and negative 51. And I think that should be pretty good for sort of showing you how these work. Um, I encourage doing as much practice on this as possible because this is a skill you will use throughout all of math for you know the next three or four years depending on how much longer you have in your math career so you want to be as solid on this as possible so i hope this has been helpful to you